Today we're going to brass plate a cast iron kettlebell. My friend Louise wanted me to come up with some custom kettlebell designs, so I decided to experiment with some kettlebells that I bought off of Amazon. I bought three different sizes from two different brands and started by removing their protective enamel finish. I started with the 30 pounder and used a flat disc on my angle grinder to just sand right through this thick finish. I couldn't really fit the flap disc inside the handle area, so I just switched to my Ryobi rotary grinder and got into these tighter spaces. They looked pretty clean, but I decided to give them a bath in some paint stripper, which was a good idea especially for this larger kettlebell because it revealed that there was a little bit of bondo or putty filling in the cast iron cavities. So I just went back to the rotary tool and ground out these little pockets. If you want to preserve that mottled cast iron texture completely, I suggest using a wire brush on an angle grinder, and it'll give you a much more of a textured surface. The flap disc worked a little bit faster, but it removed that texture and made everything smooth, except of course for the pock marks. We're going to apply the brass using heat and friction, and our brass is actually coming in the form of the wire bristles on these brushes. I made sure to order brushes that had solid brass wires, and I got the wheels both for my drill and for my angle grinder. Now the angle grinder is way more powerful than a drill, so we're going to start with the cup on that. The high RPMs of the angle grinder creates heat through friction and the brass wires start melting off into a thin veneer on top of the cast iron. And this started working right away. I had to apply a decent amount of pressure to get good adherence on the iron. And the biggest challenge was just keeping the kettlebell stable. The angle grinder and the wire cup was great for doing the broader curved surfaces, but it had a little bit of trouble getting into the crevices for the lettering. The other thing that I noticed is that I was using up the wire wheel pretty fast. All that pressure was shortening the wires and at this point I had worked my way through about a fifth or a sixth of the length of the wires. A couple of my blacksmithing friends suggested I use heat to speed up the process and more efficiently use the wires. So I used my benzomatic torch to heat up the kettlebell and right away I noticed a big difference. The brass coating went on really fast and I didn't burn through as much of the wire by putting on so much pressure. Now I'm not getting the kettlebell red hot, I'm just heating it to about 250 to 300 degrees. And this boost is just making a big difference and letting friction do the rest. Now I didn't want to feel like you had your hand on epoxy, but at the same time I don't want the kettlebells to have a dirty finish on them that comes off onto your hand or onto your clothes. So I sealed the freshly brass plated kettlebell with some simple finish by Maker Brand. That's right, even though this is typically meant for wood, this boiled linseed and wax finish is fantastic on steel. I just rubbed on a thick coat. Now this was really easy since the kettlebell was still a little bit warm. Then let it sit for 10 minutes and then rubbed out the excess with a clean rag. The finish looks great, but let's test it and see if it's actually clean to the touch. I tested it out using a nice clean rag, rubbed it vigorously against the brass handle, and look at that, rag's perfectly clean. This is important because I don't just want this to be a decorative finish, I also want this as a very nice tactile, real material finish that will protect the cast iron from rust because Brass is a non-ferrous metal. That worked well, but we have more kettlebells and I have some other ideas that I want to test out. But before we get to that, let's hear from our sponsor, Displate. Displate is a really cool art company that prints some fantastic designs right onto metal. Now I'm working with them to create my own custom line of artwork, but in the meantime, I got to pick out some really cool designs that I'm going to put in a couple of my houses. Now I'm a sucker for vintage blueprints and I actually got the patent drawings for the original Lego minifigures printed onto metal. How cool is that? Now I focus mostly on illustrations because that's my aesthetic like drawings from Buckminster Fuller, a really cool detailed drawing of the human heart, but they also have a wide variety of photography prints as well. This artwork comes really well packaged and they send you everything you need to mount it on the wall and you don't need to make any holes either, which is great if you're a renter. All you have to do is use the wipes that they send to clean off the wall a little bit. Then you put on these stickers that give you a clean surface for sticking on the magnets. That's right. 
They're metal plates, so they just stick right onto these adhesive magnets. What's ingenious about it is that it makes leveling the artwork so easy. You just slide it on the magnets, hold up a level if you need to have a reference, and if you get tired of one piece of art, you can just pull it off the magnets and throw up another one. So click on the link in the description to get your own disc plate wall art now. All right, back to the experiments. For the big kettlebell, I decided to try a powder coated finish. So after cleaning it with the angle grinder and the paint stripper, I then wiped it all down with some acetone. Powder coating is a highly durable paint finish that comes as a powder that you spray on with a special gun that uses static electricity to make the powder particles stick to the metal. This dried powder is then baked into a smooth, shiny glaze in an oven set to around 400 degrees. Now, obviously, you don't want to use your kitchen oven. So I got one of these electrical smokers and thought that that might work since the thermometer went up to, well, at least past 450. But after turning it on and leaving it on for a couple hours, I was seeing that it wasn't getting hot enough. So I enlisted the help of Brett from Skull and Spades, and we cut a hole in the back so that we could put in another heating element into this electric oven. Now I really wanted to get this done so I just went to Home Depot and looked at what they had on the shelf and I found this element that's actually used for igniting charcoal. There's no control on it, you just plug it in and it starts heating up. I then brushed off some of the excess powder off of the oven rack and put it in to bake. Now even though we were now able to get this oven past 400 degrees, it's still not an ideal setup because you have to open the door and let out a lot of the heat just to check on the powder coating. So what you wanna do is keep an eye on the powder coating until the powder starts to flow. That means basically it melts and it doesn't look like powder anymore, it now looks shiny. Once it starts to flow, you then wanna bake it or cure it for 20 minutes at 400 degrees. Now this was supposed to be a chrome powder and it certainly was shiny and silvery, but it wasn't very chrome-like in my opinion. Now the coating part works great. It's a nice, smooth, durable finish, but I think I might have to go back to the drawing board and try some different color and try some different color combinations because this chrome isn't doing it for me at all. So not all experiments work out great, but I did feel encouraged enough to do a little bit more research into powder coating. So look for a follow-up video in the future. So I still have one more clean kettlebell left. So let me know if you have any ideas for how you want to see me finish it. Thanks for watching this maker experiment. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.